أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي uh, Yet another reminder for you folks and myself in regards to the, the, the wretched evil of shamelessness this is something that the Prophet ﷺ feared the most for his followers. And particularly, I just want to be very realistic with you. I'll share some uh, you know, advice from the Qur'an in regards to this ayah from Ali Imran with you. But before I do, look, we're living in a time where you are constantly exposed to shamelessness. And you're exposed to it so much, you're desensitized to it. So when you see something lewd and vulgar the first time, when you do have your shame intact, you get disturbed. But if you see it over and over and over and over again, you don't even know what the big deal is. Why are people making such a big deal about it? You know, and so you become desensitized and you, then you start questioning, why, why does Allah make such a big deal of it? Why is it that it's such, a, such an evil? Understand that when you see something corrupt, like something shameless, something lewd, you know, something you shouldn't, your eyes should not be exposed to, or you hear something your ears should not be exposed to, and you don't find a problem with it anymore, it's an indication that you've got a serious problem in your heart because your heart is not disturbed by sin anymore. Your heart is not disturbed by evil anymore. That's, that's a problem. It's a very deep spiritual problem. And if you have that problem, then the rest of your iman, the rest of your faith, you will not be able to concentrate in your prayer. You're not going to be able to cry when you, when you ask Allah. Those things will disappear from your life because you have allowed for shamelessness to take over, to take over your life. And today, you know, I mean, you're watching this and you have accounts on Facebook. You have friends on Facebook who have absolutely lewd and shameless pictures. I mean, I, I opened my account on Facebook to try to get in touch with some of my cousins from abroad. And then people just want to be my friend. I don't even check the account anymore because I'm scared if, if I say, yes, I want to be your friend, what picture I'm going to see. I'm terrified of it. I'm terrified of that. Why? Simply because we've opened the door and we don't feel like there's a problem. Not even a little bit. So th this, you know, whether it's you know stuff you're watching on the internet, stuff you see on TV, the kinds of things you say, the kinds of words you use, words can also be shameless. The kinds of langu language you use that's shameless. These sorts of things we become desensitized to. And the more we become desensitized to it, again, the more spiritually we become bankrupt. Now Allah says in this ayah, He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً And for the, as, though, for, as for those who whenever they do an act of shamelessness, they look at something, they go somewhere, they do something, they're with someone that they shouldn't have been with. They do something they shouldn't have done. Any form of shamelessness. Fahishatan implies any of it. The slightest bit of it and the worst of it. Any of it. Dhakarullah. They immediately remembered Allah. They immediately remembered Allah. Imagine you're doing something, something shameless, your mother walks in on you. Right? Your sister walks in on you. Your brother walks in on you. Your father walks in on you. Your friends see you do something. How humiliated would you be? How embarrassed would you be? How sorry would you feel that, you know, you would feel like scum. You would absolutely feel like scum. But now Allah is saying, you want to you wanna save yourself from becoming shameless? If you do fall into that act, then it's inevitable, you will. It's fine, it's, you know, that, it, that it's going to happen. But if it does happen, your remedy for protecting you from next time is dhakarullah. Immediately they remembered Allah. Not even thumma dhakarullah or fa dhakarullah. Immediately they remembered Allah. Immediately. فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ Then immediately they asked Allah to forgive for their sins. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Who's gonna forgive your sin if not Allah anyway? See, when you do something shameless, you feel really bad about yourself. When you feel bad about yourself, shaitan comes and says, How are you gonna talk to Allah now? What face are you gonna show him? First you do this and now you think you're gonna pray to Allah? You hypocrite. And so you say, Yeah, I shouldn't talk to Allah. I'm, I'm scum and you become distanced from Allah and shaitan succeeds. When you do something evil, especially an act of shamelessness, something you're, you, you know, that's humiliating, you go and ask Allah Azza wa to forgive immediately. And Allah puts a condition. You know, you could become addicted to that. Yeah, I mess up. I, I watch this really terrible stuff and then I ask Allah to forgive me. And I'm pretty, good, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this next week again. 
Allah says, وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا they, don't, they didn't insist upon what they did. In other words, when you apologize to Allah, when you, when you begged Allah that you should ward yourself off from this shamelessness, then you, you knew in your mind, you made a commitment in your mind, in your heart, that you're not going to come back to it. If you do come back to it, that, you know, we're human being, it might happen. But uh, you're in your heart, there's no, not even the slightest bit of a, a doubt that you're abandoning this forever. You're abandoning it forever. You can't give up. And maybe you've tried before and you failed. You gave it up, then you went back to it. You gave it up, then you went back to it. You gave it up when you went back to it. So you start saying to yourself, yeah, I've done this enough times. Probably I'll be back to it. You've already failed. No matter how many times you failed, you cannot have that attitude. That attitude alone means you are not sorry before Allah. You're not sorry before Allah. So that's just some things about the way we have to pray for getting out of the cycle of shamelessness. Just a little bit of additional advice, practical advice. Practically, what can you do in addition to the prayer? One of the things you can do is don't be alone. Just don't be alone. Uh, be with good company. If you have free time, usually you end up in shameless activity when you're by yourself. So don't be by yourself. If you have a laptop or a computer in your room and that leads you to problems, don't keep it in your room. You know, and, and keep the door open. And you know, if, if you're going to be with company that, that uh, you know, leads you into shameless behavior, if you know you're going to go somewhere where you're going to see things that are inappropriate, try to change that scene. Try to get out of that scene. Spend, you know, especially if you're in college, you have like four or five hour gaps in between classes and you're doing whatever in that time. Why don't you just go to the masjid, sit there and study. It's a safe place. You can't really mess up there all that much. Hopefully they don't have Wi-Fi, <laughs> right? But the idea is find, save yourself from putting yourself in the situations where you know you fall into that stuff. You know there are certain places in your house or in your environment, in your world, when you are in those places, you end up doing bad things. It just happens every time you're in that room or in that place, you end up doing bad things. Then you should be smart enough to know that and get away from that place. Don't be there by yourself. Don't be there alone. This is something you have to teach yourself to do because I tell you, if, you, if you're not able to ward yourself off from shamelessness and you're not, I mean, this is a problem for married people and non-married people. But I'm specifically talking to those of you that are not married. When you do get married, you will have messed up married lives. You will have messed up married lives. You will have no respect for your spouse because you have no respect for shame. Marriage is, a, is an act that, that shows respect for shame. But you've already lost all of that respect because of your addiction to whatever. Right? You've lost all that respect. So you will, have ruined, you will have ruined your family life. You're not going to be able to be a good husband or a good wife or a good parent for that matter. So you've ruined your entire life over this addiction. Get out of it while you can. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us able to get rid of our, our addictions. May Allah make us, uh, allow us to have the gift of good company that keeps us from these shameless activities. I'm not even saying do religious activities. If you could just find a healthy alternative, play sports play some basketball, you know, ping pong, whatever it is. But just don't go into that specific thing. Save yourself from that. Before you do good, at least do no harm. At least do that much. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect all of us, especially our youth. I pray sincerely for all of you and the, 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 the protection of your own iman and the iman of your family. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Astaghfirullah